So now we're going to move on to the layout and seating tab in Aisle Planner. So you'll go ahead and click layout and seating and we will have a diagram here for you. We have some different templates we use. Today I'm just going to show you how it looks to work off of what would be like a tent or just a nice rectangular room. So when you click on layout and seating, this is what you'll see. You'll see layout here and seating in the secondary tab. Then you'll see the actual diagram here. And then you'll also see this right hand side column. This is going to be super helpful to toggle through different views and different um, library of rental items. So for most venues, we're looking at the 60 or 72 inch rounds, maybe farm tables, depending on what you're renting in or what the venue provides will be what you choose. So to get started, we will just start dragging and dropping these to the diagram. You'll notice that you'll see table one, you'll see these numbers one through eight all the way around, meaning that you could see up to eight people at this table. You are able to adjust the number of seats per table, but we will always recommend kind of the best amount or capacity per table. To add more tables, you could either keep clicking 60 inch round and dragging and dropping. You'll see that it notates it as table two, or you can control um, C, control V, copy paste onto the diagram. When you're initially creating your diagram, we will likely have a kind of idea of schematic for you, but feel free to add in tables and don't worry so much about the chronological order. So you might add in 10 tables, we'll add in a few here, and the numbers might not make sense. So if these actually fit, I'm going to lock this in place, but if these actually fit onto the diagram appropriately, you could see it's like table one, two, three would be the next one here. Don't worry about that yet. I will show you how to change that. But to get started, add in your tables. You can also look on the right hand side here and see sweetheart tables, different size tables. Um, we'll add in a sweetheart table here just so we can play with it. You'll also see different size rounds without chairs. So as you're adding in tables with chairs, this number counter up here is gonna be helpful to see how many seats you have per guest you have. So take a look at that. These tables here without chairs will add tables, but not obviously seats. So if you have maybe a cake table on a wine barrel, 30 inch is gonna be like the closest. We'll throw that in here. Maybe you have a dessert table on just a normal six foot table. We'll throw that in here and maybe a coffee table. You can also do individual chairs, furniture, if you do decide to have like a lounge set or something along those lines, as well as the bar. We can also make a ceremony seating with the actual like chairs listed out on the schematic. So I know that there's lots of functions here. A lot of which you won't use, you'll very likely just use kind of the tables with chairs and a few six foot tables but everything is able to be manipulated. So you can turn it. We can flip this guy over so that they're facing the right way. It's not perfect, but I will definitely go through your diagram and make it perfect. And then what you'll see is the seat numbers, the table number, and all of that correlates here. So for table seven, we could rename it. Let's name it test. And you'll see that it comes test here. We can toggle this switch to eliminate the table names, turn them back on. Seat numbers is going to become very important as we move forward in the planning progress and as you're finalizing your name cards. Guest names, once we start assigning seats for every guest, you'll be able to see exactly where they are on the diagram. And then the same for meals, you'll be able to see there's going to be a color coding on each chair for which guest is associated with which chair. So take a peek at these functions. I'm gonna name this table seven again. And we'll pretend that this is all pretty. On this right hand side, we're gonna click on guest. So this is way number one to seat your guest. So all of your guests will populate here. You will see these little different um, they're like a little briefcase with a plus sign. That's a dietary restriction. The question marks means that they have not responded with an RSVP yet. 
However, if it's just like this, like my name is here, you will see that there's like no markers and I have responded positively. So first and foremost, we know where the bride and groom are gonna go. So we're gonna click on the name Amelia Miller, drag it over to the table, and we have the option to either just drag it to the table or if you wanna put them at a specific seat, you can hover over the seat and drop them there. If you hover over the table, it'll just automatically drop them into the lowest number. So it'll start at one, go up to eight. So I'm gonna drop her here. And you'll see a little blue star came. That means if we look in this left-hand corner, blue is steak. The star means that there's a dietary restriction. There is an additional way to seat guest from this view. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down so you can see a little bit better. You click on the table click on the seat and you'll see the list populate here click to enter a guest name what's nice about this is as if I were to start typing Amelia Miller you would see that Mark Varney will pop up because he's associated with her I'm gonna start typing typing Mark and he will populate here so you can use this to see all of your guests at these tables if you are more of a visual person so we could take my name Let's say I want to seat myself at table seven, but I want to be somewhere where maybe my back isn't to the sweetheart table. I can put myself maybe at seat three and then my plus one at seat four. If you click on the table, it will take you to this little window and notice when I click on a chair at the table, it'll adjust it to this window. You can also move guests in their seats here. So why this would become useful, let's say you're doing menu cards that also have the guest names on them so that they know specifically where to sit and in turn catering knows exactly where to drop their plate. You will need to order the guest not only at the right table but at the right seat at that table. So you will go from one to eight. That's also how you'll organize your escort cards or name cards at the tables, but you can move people around here. So you'll see them moving on the table as I move them in this list. So this is one way to seat people. Another way to seat them is going to be to go to seating up here at the top. And you will see these placards that have been created. Here's where I was just toggling at table number seven. You are welcome to drag and drop people type and select their names. Also with this, you will be able to move placards. So let's say you want to switch tables around or most often what will happen is you switch tables around on the layout and these numbers become out of order. We can just drag and drop them to the right table and rename them. I'll name this test table. So that way when we pop over to the layout tab, it'll reflect here. So this tab as a whole, the layout and seating tab does communicate with the guest tab, but within the layout and seating tab, the layout and the seating do communicate as well. Let's say that you don't like where you've seated people and you are like, I just want a fresh start. I want to start over. You can delete the entire table. Deleting the table will permanently remove it and its seating assignments, but it will not remove your guest. So note, Tyler Alto and the guest of Tyler, we are gonna delete them. They currently have check marks by their name. And once we refresh, they no longer have guest um, check marks by their name. So if you do delete people out, let's say we deleted myself, just backspacing myself out, you'll see that reflected here in real time. Oh, and we've gone offline.